All right, now we're kind of getting to the reason why I want to do some mental space before we actually, you know, uh, go much further. Uh, on page 105 for 104, 105, it really starts talking about some kind of casting and conversion of data types. And I think from the Python course uh, or from your previous programming experience, you probably are aware of implicit conversions where you basically something starts off as a, as one variable type and then moves to another. We even have seen this already in our in our application uh, where we're taking text data and converting it to decimal, right? And we're taking um, numerical data and maybe converting it back to text. So uh, th there's going to be some further discussion of this. But what I want to do is, uh, assuming you've read 104, 105, I just wanted to show you something kind of interesting about uh, the whole .NET framework as well as as well as these conversions. So right now I, I've changed my mental space uh, uh, mental space a bit to make it a byte. So byte x is a byte. It's no longer an integer. Well, what's the difference? Well, hopefully by now you've already seen this kind of image in the book where a byte is a very, very small positive integer. Right, that's uh, it's a very very small positive integer going from zero to two fifty five. I will not go into the mechanics of that, but it's very 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 interesting. So you should see like why is it two fifty five? Why isn't it one hundred and eighty? Go ahead and check it out. Very 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 cool. Also, by the way, uh, assigned byte. Um, uh, th this can only be positive, so it goes zero to two fifty five. This goes from negative one twenty eight to one twenty seven. Why? Because in this case, all eight bits can be used to communicate the number. In this case, one bit is used for the variable, for the, for the sign. So anyway, but I'm just, that's it. I'm not gonna talk anymore about that uh, because that was talked about in the fundamentals class, or you can just look it up. But anyway, so that means that a byte, a byte can only really be up to 255. So watch, watch what happens when I try to make this byte 256. So right away, I get a nice little error message going, dude, you can't have a 256 um, number being thrown into that byte. I thought that was pretty cool, right? Otherwise, uh, in older versions of C, it would have allowed you to do that and something really evil would happen. So instead, um, but in this case, it's not going to let me go any further. It's going to say, dude, you can't do that. All right, awesome. So what happens then? down in my uh, more executional part where I go x plus equals, I'm going to use the, the uh, plus equals assignment. I'm going to add 255 uh, right there. Is it smart enough to pick it up? No, it's not smart enough to pick it up. So here's x. It's a byte with 5. I'm now going to add this. So the value should really be 260. Watch what happens when I run this stuff. So it runs very, very smoothly. And it tells me now x is four. So what's going on here is that it's actually rolling over, right? It went up to uh, 255. We added uh, five to it, which would have been 260. It rolled over, and then it's giving me four. Uh, things like that would drive us crazy back in the program world, because if this was a more complex program, we'd be going, whoa, 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 why is this 260? Why is it four? So uh, I wanted to sort of show you that as a sort of a demonstration of, of some of these limitations. If I went and made an int out of this deal, so let's go ahead and make it an int. Uh, I'm going to go int. And I'm not smart enough. Am I smart enough to get that number? Let's go int. It's going to be that. Can I get that number? I can. By the way, the other thing the book does, which I thought was interesting, is changing these things to underscores. I haven't seen anybody do that, but it's nice that apparently you can do that for readability. Way to go. All right. So let's uh, comment this out and just run it uh, as is and see what happens. All right. So I get my number. That's beautiful. Let's go ahead and add one to it. Which, by the way, the other way to do that is go plus plus, but whatever. I'll run it again. And notice what I get now. It's rolled over to the negative, right? It kind of went from positive rolling over to negative. So get some exercise in that. Try and, like, you know, screw around with, with your variable types. Don't just accept what the books tell you. Try and basically 
improve some of this stuff with these variable pipes and then these variable pipes as well. Now the book suggests, and I'm in really no position to disagree, that the more common variable types are decimals because they are actually pretty accurate uh, in that they can handle more detailed numbers. And then um, uh, integers being, when we're talking about numbers, uh, integers if it's an integer, so int if it's an integer, decimal if you're expecting any kind of decimalization. I, that might, you might be thinking, well, of course it's decimal. Well, not necessarily, it could be a float, right? Or a double, right? But they're basically saying use decimal. All right, so that is where I wanted to go with that. Um, I tell you what, while I'm sitting here anyway, the next two uh, sections are actually pretty interesting because they deal with how to do slightly more complicated math. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's uh, hit the intro button and get rid of you. And actually what I'm about to do is I'm about, I'm about to talk about, uh, okay, forget it. I, I'm not even gonna show you this, the slides, right? I'm not gonna show you, yeah, it's too far away. But I'm going to show you basically the math class and the um, random class. So the math class. So let's imagine we're going to make this thing a decimal again, decimal, decimal. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to make it uh, kind of how old I am now, which is 54.9, we'll say. 54.9. And I'm not going to bother with uh, any kind of operational stuff there. So let's get that done, get that done. Let's run it again. Whenever you make a change to a code, uh, see, make sure it's right. So in this case, it's not right because I forgot to put the M operator for money, right? That's why. Okay, good deal. So I'm going to go and 54.9. Beautiful. All right. So now let's use some math. What if I want to round that up? Well, if I want to round that up, I could go X is a sign and then I could use the math class. Notice the math class does show up. Now what's a class? A class is an object. It's got uh, it's got uh, attributes, so basically variable, and it's got methods. And so if I go math and then I hit the period button, I get all these fabulous methods suggested to me. And one of them is round. So I hit the tab button for that. I'm going to take uh, my fabulous x. And I'm going to round it to the first uh, decimal spot, which is actually kind of dumb because it's already rounded the first decimal spot. So let's round it to the nearest integer. I'm going to assume that that's going to work. And let's see what this does to my age. So, so looks good. At least syntactically, it'll work. It won't be a runtime error. And I go, go. And this thing did, in fact, round it up to 55. Awesome. So what I wanted to show you there is a nice way you can screw around with the math, uh, math function. You could also go x is assigned math. Again, tab, dot. What are, are other cool things? Absolute value, uh, power, um, and then and then and then boy, the full trigonomic and oh geez, I don't even know what clamp is. By the way, feel free, use Google, use help to figure out some of these things. But there's some really neat sort of um, math uh, ideas. Actually, I'll tell you one thing I will do is I will square root. I'll square root my fabulous uh, age. All right, so I'm going to square root my age. I wonder what the square root of my age is. And oh, it's bad. Why are you bad? Square root, square root. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see if I can figure it out on the fly. I cannot convert a decimal to a double. All right, sure, 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 sure. So that's going to square root. Okay, you know, that actually gets in my the whole casting conversation here. I'm gonna try this, this is an experiment. I don't think this is gonna work, but let's just give it a kick anyway. No, you're definitely mad. You're mad. You're mad here now, and you're mad here because again, I can't convert the decimal to the double. All right, well, you know what, not sure. Tell you what, though, what I'll do here is just to demonstrate this. I'm going to create myself a double x2, and then I'm going to print the x2 because I'm really just trying to show um, this. Oh no, you you're still mad. All right, I don't know. Forget it. Anyway, uh, teaches me for going off a little bit on my own. But this is what I do in class. So this is where uh, again you'd want to experiment, find out why. Why is this not working? Feel free to email me. The other really cool uh, method out there. 
uh, class out there is random, which is sitting on page 108 and 109. And I think for this one, yeah, for this one, well, actually, I'll just use, use the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. And uh, there's no X2. So very nice. Thank you for helping me out. I'm going to make myself another variable, which I'll just do right here. Random. See, it's ready for me there. This is on page 109. Random. This is going to go RN, which is a number. And it's assigned a new random. So what this is doing is it's basically creating uh, a random number object. Now my random number object uh, can actually do stuff. So for example, in this case, I can go random number. Notice it's more of an object here. I can go dot and it's got methods. And one of them is next. And, uh, and that'll give me the next number in a random object. So I think Yeah, I'm, I'm, go I'm going for broke. I'm going to go for broke here. I'm going to go console dot right line open parentheses and close parentheses. And let's just do it. Yep. There it is. That is apparently a nice random number between the maximum value of a 32 bit integer and zero. And if I was to run it again, I get a different random number. So uh, again, using this as a workspace, this would be a pretty good way to sort of uh, mess around with, uh, with, uh, with some of that. So what I just tried to show you is um, a little bit of just some, I mean, it's not gonna replace what you, you learned from the book, read the book, uh, but just some of the nuances behind some of these variable types. And then the two classes, the math class, uh, which enables you to you know do some fairly simple and some really complicated math methods. And then the random class, which is how, if you ever wanted to create a card game or whatever, how you basically get uh, randomization. All right, so that's good for that. And then uh, probably I, I do feel compelled to talk about strings in the next one. So I probably will start talking about strings and then ultimately how to convert things back and forth from numericals to strings, because we will need to know that for our fabulous uh, invoice total uh, application.